Turning the compost, turning the compost. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I guess now would be a good time to talk about this bad boy. This is the IM4000 Dual Chamber Tumbling Composter by FCMP. This thing comes fully loaded with two chambers, 18 gallons or about one and a half cubic feet of compost per cycle. That's probably two five gallon buckets, depending on the amount of shrinkage that you get from your original material. Now this cycle is gonna take anywhere from four to six months, depending on your climate, the kind of material that you put in it, and how frequently you're doing the spinning. Now because this is an aerobic process, meaning it uses air, that frequent spinning is going to aerate the compost that's inside. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is be sure to wet the compost fairly often and make sure that it's breathing appropriately to manage the moisture. It's gonna help out the process. The amount of compost generated by a system like this is great for supplementing a backyard garden. This tumbler style is easy to use. It's easy to assemble and it's pretty inexpensive, selling for about $80 at the time this is filmed. There's a link to the exact model in the description below. So compost works as a kind of slow release fertilizer. It's made up of soluble and insoluble nutrients, which means that you put the compost on top, start watering it, you get a trickle down effect of some of the soluble nutrients, but that's really only part of the story. A lot of people are concerned that if a heavy rain comes after putting compost onto your crops or watering too much, that all the nutrients are washed away and you have to start over again. And that's mostly not the case. The insoluble nutrients are still bound to the decomposing organic matter, which means the plant can't immediately get to it anyway. It requires further conversion by the microorganisms that are living in the soil to make them water soluble, which actually then makes them accessible to the plants. It is a fascinating process involving plant hormones. I'm gonna put a link down in the description to a really interesting study if you guys are interested in balancing chemistry equations. So the best part about using this and why I prefer it over some kind of liquid fertilizer is that a heavy rain doesn't shut down your operation and you don't need to go put more out there. Compost can be put out once a season. Feed your little guys all year long. So some things that we've learned since starting this compost journey in February, you can definitely compost citrus. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. There are a couple articles that we've read that talk about the dangers of citrus and trying to compost it because of the oils in the peel or the propensity to grow mold, both of which are true. However, with the right balance of carbonaceous materials and time, it all turns into the same stuff that we're after. Now we've got five varieties of citrus on this property, and I would say it takes about four months for the peels to decompose in this kind of southwestern U.S. climate we have here. Your mileage may vary. Whatever you do, don't try to compost stuff like this. Does anybody even know what this is? Tell me in the comments if you've ever seen something like this before or if you know the name of it. If you try to compost something like this, yes, eventually it will break down. However, as you're aerating it and doing your frequent turning, specifically in this tumbler style, it gets kind of matted into this big tapestry of weird carbonaceous noodle uh, byproduct and it won't break down the way that you want it to. If you're gonna use something like this or pine needles, make sure you shred them and make them into very small pieces first. You are gonna get bugs. Flies and gnats mostly in our case, though it might be due to the amount of citrus that we had in there. We found that adding more carbonaceous material really kind of helps out with that problem. And this is gonna be messy. Don't try to compost somewhere that you want to look or smell nice. When you wet your compost, it is going to get on the ground. And when you load and unload compost, you're gonna spill. This is easy enough to move around. Uh, that's why we have ours set up on dirt. So we'd simply move it out of the way, sweep up the mess, put it right back. Ah, nice. Let's talk about horse poop. My sister-in-law has a horse, and the genius that I am collected a bunch of the manure, put it into the compost. Literally that night, 
As I'm sitting down to congratulate myself on my brilliant plan, I run into one of Charles Dowding's Amino Pyrolid videos. Apparently, these things completely destroy your garden. Amino pyrolid herbicides are used to control broadleaf weeds. They're sprayed onto commercial hay fields for feeding livestock. That hay is cut and packaged and sold to my sister-in-law. She feeds it to her horse, and you can see where I'm going with this. That horse manure still contains some of the herbicide. It's going to be horrible for anything broadleaf, so there go your tomatoes, your beans, your lettuce, anything else. As far as I can tell, grasses and brassicas are immune. However, this is such a big deal that governments in multiple countries have taken action, though the stewardship programs are really far from ideal. Long story short, unless your sister-in-law's horse is fed completely organic hay and materials, don't use that horse's manure. I did still put this under the orange tree and on my cucumbers, so I'll let you know if we get pickles this year.